Hey everyone, I hope you had a wonderful uh, winter break and that you had the great opportunity to spend a lot of time with your friends and family, as I did as well. Um, this video is an introduction to functions, which is our next unit. So the first thing that I want to talk about is determining your hat size. So a lot of you tend to wear different types of hats, um, and we typically use a chart to determine what size hat would be appropriate for your head. So in this example here, we have the hat size, we have um, the inches and centimeters, and then that also determines um, what the hat size should be as far as extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. So I have two questions for you. The first question is, what is the input for determining your hat size, and what is the output? So the input for determining your hat size is really the size in inches of your head. So if you were to um, take a ruler and wrap it around your head, that would determine how many inches um, your head would be as far as its circumference. So your input is the size of your head, then because of that size, our output would be the size of the hat that would be appropriate. So if my head was about, let's say, a little over 21 inches in circumference, I would have a hat size of a small. So my input is about 21 inches, and the output of that is that I'd have to wear a small hat size although this hat's looking a little big right now. I want to show you another example. So a lot of you like to go to vending machines to get some snacks, and I want you to think about what a vending machine really does and how it exactly works. So if I go up to a vending machine, I'm going to put in a certain amount of money into my vending machine. I'm going to click those little buttons, and then the output is I'm going to get some sort of snack. So really what's happening in a vending machine, I'm putting in some money. The vending machine does all this creative work. And then the output is my snack. Just a little background information. One of the first uh, vending machine stores were here in Philadelphia. And it was called Horn and Hard Art which had opened in the early 1900s, early 1900s. And what this store did, it was full of vending machines with cakes and pies, and you can go into the store, and you can put money into the machine. It's going to do its little fancy work. And then your output is the piece of pie that you chose. I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit tomorrow specifically about how this exactly relates to functions um, in a little bit more depth. But this next image might help you as well. So really what a function is, is you put in some sort of value. This is just a visual of what we call function machine. Um, it kind of relates to the whole concept of what a function is. And the function machine has some sort of equation. And then you get an output. So for example, if my function is y equals 3x, if my input is negative 2, I'm going to put negative 2 into the function y equals 3x. x is represented by your input, so negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, which is my output. So think of a vending machine. If I were to put negative 2 into the vending machine, and inside the vending machine, this is the equation, it's going to take negative 2 times 3 to get an output of negative 6. So a function is the relationship that pairs each input with exactly one output. So on your graphic organizer, let's fill in that section. A function, I want to make sure you use the correct term, is the relationship that 
pairs each input with exactly one output. If you need to pause this video to write that down, you can. And then our domain or input is our x values. And our output or our range is our y values. Domain and range are terms that you'll hear a little bit later on. For now, I want you to focus on input and output. So going back to here, if my input is negative 2, I can only get one output. Therefore, it's a function. This is kind of the fancy version of how to write it, and you'll see this a couple different ways. But this is function notation. This is kind of more um, the basics of algebra, how you might see it next year. So y is your output. Then we have this is called f of x. f is the name of the function, and x is our input. Okay, so we're going to do a couple examples. This is not the one that's on the graphic organizer. I just want to show you some examples before we move back to the graphic organizer. So say I put an input of 3. And my function rule is x minus 2. If I plug in 3 into my function... I have 3 minus 2, which gives me then an output of 1. And again, this function machine is just kind of a visual to help you understand what a function really is. Let's try another example. If I have an input of 10, and my rule is 2x, again, this means 2 is being multiplied by x. In this case, my input or my x value is 10. So 2 times 10 is 20. So for every input, I have exactly one output. Let's do two examples on your graphic organizer. <clears throat> on our first example, Let's have, oops, an input of 6, <clears throat> my function rule is going to be x minus 10. x is my input value, in this case 6 minus 10. And in this case you can use a calculator to help you with your computation. 6 minus 10 gives me negative 4. Let's do one more example. Let's put in negative 3. Our function rule is 4x. Again, when your number and um, variable are next to each other, it's multiplication. So in this case, it's 4. I'm going to use parentheses to separate my terms times negative 3, which gives me an output of negative 12. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this video on your introduction to functions. We're going to dive into it a little bit more with um, graphing some terms. We're going to talk about some other types of functions, linear versus nonlinear, as well as um, discrete versus continuous data, and how we can actually use this in the real world. All right, everyone, have a good rest of the evening, and I will see you tomorrow.